news this morning, the this discussion that has been around this table uh, on where the uh, headquarters should be. I was, as you know, uh, General Ham, and uh, I was very much involved in the in dividing out the continent of Africa into one command. It had been parts of three commands, and uh, I was involved in that change. And at the time, my preference was to have it in Africa, have the headquarters in the place that I at that time felt was be, uh, would be more appropriate because of the location of the various AFRICOMs uh, or unions uh, would be in uh, Ethiopia. But we also understand, it's, it's interesting, when you talk, as I do, individually to the presidents of the various countries, they agree that it would be better. But the problem is, and we all know it, with this whole idea of the colonialism and all that, they, they felt nobody wanted the presence in Africa because it would make it look like kind of a takeover thing. So I understand all that. But, uh, you know, I'd be very much opposed, and I, I just want to get on record that if there is a serious look at changing the headquarters, you know, obviously we got Tinker Air Force Base, Aldous and all that, but it should stay, in my opinion, in Stuttgart for this reason. We have our other comms that, are like uh, uh, the Pacific Com, is is in in theater. It's it's in the Pacific, and we uh, in, in these areas. If you put it where it's a different time zone, you've got a problem. I know your predecessors um, uh, were. They have to come down, and we want them to have relational, uh, you know, be present in. Uh, in the continent as much as possible, it would be very difficult if you are coming from the United States, in my opinion. Stuttgart works well. It's got two commands there, and I would hope that we leave it there until the day comes that we'd be able to move it to a, uh, with the acceptance of Africa, to some African nation. And I, I, I just think it would be very awkward. It's really kind of awkward right now, and I've, I've talked to uh, your two uh, predecessors and uh, in terms of getting equipment down there and responding and all that, even the distance between Stuttgart and places on the continent are inconvenient. So I, I guess I just would, if it gets any kind of a serious talk about changing that, I want to end on the discussion, okay? Yes, sir, absolutely. Uh, the other thing, uh, General McNabb, I want to bring up something that probably nobody up here is even familiar with, but you are. And it has to do with the FAA bill, and it has to do uh, with one of our favorite subjects, and that is the subpart S. The subpart S has always been, that's the non-scheduled carriers, has always been separate from, uh, from the crew rest and some of the problems, that, uh, some of the, uh, not problems, but some of the things that uh, people comply with. Uh, with scheduled airlines, but we have problems in in many cases with bringing things in. Let's say from uh, from uh, Stuttgart into or from someplace going into theater and then coming back out, which we do. We take equipment in. We take personnel in and out. And if you use that uh, 15 hours, you can't do it. And I've got uh, I've got several examples here that we've actually looked at and mapped out. One would be from Belgium to Bagram to Amsterdam. That's a regular route that is run. And they, they take tents and, and equipment in there. Uh, another one from Germany to uh, Kandahar to Hong Kong, a regular route. Another one to from Shannon to, uh, well, uh, uh, one from Ramstein to Qatar in return. Well, the problem is, because of the securities, you can't leave these aircraft in there overnight. So they can't have a crew rest, an RON, uh, that, that others uh, could have because it's in a war zone. Um, so I'd like to get uh, you kind of on record in recognizing that as a problem and any comments it, uh, you have to make in, in, if you agree with me on this problem. In, in other words, we want that sub uh, S to remain as it has been in the past. I say I do anyway. What's your thoughts? Yes, sir. Well, uh, Administrator Babbitt did come and, and talk to me and said, hey, what are your concerns? As I look at the uh, U.S. flag carriers, the Civil Reserve Air Fleet, I do depend absolutely on the scheduled and the, the non-scheduled carriers. Uh, I do, and I mentioned to him then, that I do not think one size fits all. Um, domestic flights where you have numbers of sorties is a little different than the international long range, and so you have to deal with it differently. Safety is paramount. There's no question, and you can do a lot of things to enhance safety. The looking at crew rest facilities on the airplane so that you can, you know, get some rest en route. Um, operational risk management programs to make sure that we're looking at that. 
But from my standpoint, what I want to do is make sure that I keep velocity up and we're, we're taking full advantage of modern airplanes. And I've really pushed the Silver Reserve Air Fleet saying I really want to get to the more modern airplanes, which are inherently more safe. I mean, they've, as uh, we get these international airplanes, the amount of money that's spent, uh, there's a lot of safety that's built into them. And, and of course, I think so that's a little bit differently. Yeah, than but, the but as far as maintaining the exemption for sub, uh, sub S, you would, would you agree with my statement yes, on that? Yeah. All right, that's good. Um, uh, uh, General Ham, I'm very interested in a lot of things that are going on there. As you know, uh, uh, well, one of the differences between you and me is uh, when a decision is made as a policy decision by this country, whether you personally agree with it or not, you, a soldier, you carry it out. Uh, I'm not. So uh, I disagreed with our attitude toward uh, the, <clears throat> the, the government in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, Laurent Bagbu and his wife Simone uh, I know the, what they've been accused of in the past, but I also know that what happened in that election, and I have documented it on the floor of the Senate, certainly brings it into question as to whether it was uh, legitimate. The French, then behind uh, Alassane uh, Ouattara, actually participated in not just in uh, Abidjan as they did with their war with their gunships. And we have no idea how many hundreds of people were killed uh, three nights ago there. And that was something where specifically the French said to the United Nations, we authorize you, we're going to use our troops and necessary to go in there and, and uh, try to uh, get the Bagbu administration out. Now, that's a real hotbed right now. It's going to have huge repercussions in the future. But uh, I hope that uh, when things like that start coming up, that you'd be in a position, in terms of what our response will be, to talk to those of, some of us who are pretty familiar with what is going on in Africa. Now, that, that same thing would go, as you and I have talked in the past, uh, with the Lord's Resistance Army, for example. That's something where we now have uh, uh, Uganda, uh, Central African Republic, uh, uh, the Congo, and Rwanda all in agreement that they need, need to get this guy. And uh, we now have a policy of the United States, because I passed the bill, that we need to do away with Joseph Kony and the LRA. Do you have any comments to make about that and where that is on your priority list? Sir, sir it is a, a, a high priority, and I think it factors into the, uh, the, the lack of security in, in East Africa as a, as a whole. And I think so long as the Lord's Resistance Army is able to operate uh, in the horrific manner in which they do, it will continue to contribute to instability in the region. We take very seriously our, our military responsibility in a supporting role in executing the strategy. Um, and, and I, and I uh, in fact, I'm in this afternoon uh, headed to State Department to have discussions on this and, and many other topics. Um, and I think the challenge for us in, in Africa is while we may not be, have access to the full array of forces that we would like to have to support this. Uh, this endeavor, we should do what we can now, and I think that uh, that that would be would be my approach in the in the near term, to enable the Ugandans particularly, but others as well, to put as much pressure as possible on the Lord's Resistance Army. Well, I know my time's expired, Mr. Chairman, but I want to make sure I get into the record this uh, how serious this is. This uh, Joseph Coney for over 20 years, almost 30 years now. He's been sent, going into the villages and stealing these little kids. It's called the, the kids or the children's army. They have to go back to, after they're trained, I'm talking about 12, 13, and 14-year-olds, they have to go back to their village and murder their parents and all that. And they have gone through and it just, they've mutilated these kids for all these years. And uh, we now have a position of, of the United States in this thing. I do say this, that we have, some really good uh, presidents over there, like Museveni uh, in Uganda, who's just as interested as we are. Uh, Kabila in Congo is just as interested as we are, um, uh, in, certainly in Rwanda, uh, their, their concerns. So I would like to stay on top of that. Anything that is new in the way of a development, I would personally like to be advised of that. And then for the record, if you could uh, put in your thoughts on I met and train and equip. Uh, I'd like to have that because when we're, we start developing our, our authorization bill, I want to get everyone on record. And I'd say the same thing for you, uh, General McNabb, as to the significance of those programs. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Senator Inhofe. Uh, Senator Blumenthal. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to join in thanking 